All right, welcome back traders. Today's video is very simple. Reversals, that is my main element in trading. That is what I do. And here we're gonna explain uh, three examples, live stream examples in real time. I'm gonna discuss first and foremost, the criteria for a reversal to occur. Um, they all have the same elements. Think of it like a recipe, if you will. They all have the same ingredients, okay? And you don't have to have all the ingredients for a reversal to happen, although the more ingredients, the better the result of the reversal. Um, same as you would bake something. If you bake something, you can still make um, a muffin, but if you're missing one of the key components or one of the additional components, it doesn't taste as sweet, maybe. What do I know? I know nothing about cooking, but all I'm saying is, um, I'm gonna annotate here, I have a notepad. I'm gonna cover them, what the ingredients are for a reversal, okay? And they are essentially, uh, you gotta be at a low, a high of day. That's probably one of the key components there. Doesn't have to happen. There are other instances in where you can have reclaim of levels in order to find a reversal. So this is one of those nuances that oftentimes, if it's at a low or high, you have a higher rate of reversal and uh, probability of a more profitable move. Um, and then you got to have these, you got to have a lot of net buying and selling. I'm going to explain what that is in terms of Delta. I'll highlight the column in a second. Um, high momentum, that's optional. Sometimes you have slow churning reversals on Friday, um, 628, June 28th. We had a slow reversal off the 120 zone on the NQ. So momentum isn't really um, something required, but it is something that re does result in a higher um, reward factor when a reversal of that size occurs. Um, no reward further um, when a high or low is made, okay, after that net buying or selling. So um, those don't make any sense. I'm gonna make sure to categorize them right now and we're gonna see them in action and we're gonna play back some of my live stream trades. I will be leaving the video description, the live streams in the description in order of which we're gonna be reviewing them. There is a total of three. So I'll put them in that order so that way you can go back and see the real stream with my commentary. More than welcome to. Um, I'm gonna. This is just gonna be a quick recap of those three trades and going over how all these three play a factor in my decision making and taking the trade, finding the opportunity, taking the trade, and then managing it through. Managing the trade is a totally different ball game. I'm not gonna be covering that in this video, but each of these trades resulted in a hundred point move in the NQ. Okay, and I captured. I believe in two of those three 100 points on the last runner. So I uh, hope this is a good and insightful video. If you guys enjoyed, subscribe, time tune in live, and make sure you drop a comment. All right, so real quick, just so we understand what we're looking at. If you're new to this, um, these are DOMs. These are essentially uh, assets trading. So this is the NASDAQ DOM here on the right side. This is the ES DOM, so the S&P futures DOM. And then this is a footprint chart. Um, I have more videos on this coming out later, but to keep this video straight and concise, we're going to be focusing on just the DOM for the NQ. So this DOM here in specific is the one where everything's going to be happening. So just keep an eye on this screen. Everything else is essentially noise in the in this, the respect that I'm not going to be discussing anything else outside of what's on the screen. And primarily, <clears throat> primarily to start with Delta, right? I said I would explain what net selling was. So we're going to go line by line, um, low or high of day. So as you see that this is, these are all numbers. This is where the NASDAQ is currently trading or has traded during this opening session. So any numbers that are grayed out, this is where price has not traded as of the opening cash session for the New York session. Um, so markets open at 6.30 a.m. Pacific, 9.30 Eastern. When price opens, it opens, um, and then you have a opening price, right? It gets annotated on the DOM. This is where price opened. And then we went higher by five points. We didn't go higher than that. That's why price is grayed out. And then we went as low as 39. That's why that's the last highlighted number. Anything below has not been traded as of the open. So now that we have that in mind, we understand that we're trading at a low of day, right? One of the criteria was for reversal that we were trading at a low or high of that current session. This can be high of day from a previous session or a current session. It doesn't matter, okay? Um, as we're trading near the low, the next thing that's important is to annotate the net buying and selling in terms of delta. Delta is the combination of the, the cumulative of the market buying minus the market selling. So if there is 100 orders, if there is 100 market, way too small, if there is 100 buy 
market buy, buy, then, and if there is minus 200 market sell, then the delta, this equals, equals, delta equals, the difference between the two in this case would be minus 100. And that's what you're gonna see in this column, right? The numbers that are in this column is the delta between, the, the spread between the market buy and market sell orders that are taking place at each price level. So at the 0.52, right, if you go straight ahead, the difference between the market buy and market sell orders are 18 total contracts. So that means there is a total of 18 more buys than sells at that specific price, right? You don't have to pay attention to every single delta that's printing. This is primarily tailored for reversals. So the most important area to focus in is gonna be the low of day in this situation or the high of day in another scenario. So for this situation, we're gonna be looking at how many sell or buy orders are taking place at the low of this session. So you see the column here, again, just recapping once more, the numbers that are highlighted is where price has traded for the session. So you're gonna be paying attention as we trade near these lows, what is the market buy versus the market sell? In other words, what is the delta? What is the net selling or buying taking place here? And what you would like to see for this recipe is you want to see more net buying. I'm sorry, more net selling than there is net buying. Why? Because if there is net selling at the low of a day, right, that means that there is more market sell orders taking place at a low of day, which then insinuates or hints that there is aggressive selling at the low of the session for this specific time of day. And if there's a lot of aggressive selling, but there is no reward, hence no reward or further low being made as those market sell orders stack up at the low of a session, then you can insinuate that there are trapped sellers at the low of the day and that market can reverse. None of these things are indicative of what will happen. There are just clues of what's potentially to occur. And I, spot, I try to spot these day in and day out using simply the DOM sometimes in conjunction with the footprint, but sake of simplicity, those are the three criterias we're looking for here. And so I'm just giving you the context of what's gonna happen within the next few minutes while I review this trade. And then we're gonna reiterate that same trade another two times so you can see how repeatable this process is. Okay, now that we have that understanding, let's roll it. And what we're gonna annotating here is Primarily the selling here. You see that anything triple digits, it's noteworthy for the NASDAQ. So when you see that triple digit net selling right here at the 45, that is noteworthy because that size is indicative of either one or massive amount of selling that is not normal or um, it's a little higher than the abnormal amount of selling you would find at any sort of price level for the NASDAQ. So keep in mind the 45s, right? That's four points, five points off the low massive amount of selling, if you cumulatively were to just pop your head add up, there's a lot of selling at the low, right? Most of the most of the price action happening at the low here is net selling. That's not natural every single day, but that is noteworthy. You're getting adding more, right? Now they have 180, 170. It's fluctuating. I clear the DOM because I want to get more cleaner and newer data as we're trading there. So it's not just adding to the current contracts i want to make sure i'm getting the freshest newest information and as that's happening you're going to see me want to want to take a bid because you're seeing the pace pick up you're seeing price more selling take place you see that more 100 another 100 seller there a cluster of buy orders comes in and every time we hit the low there keep in mind no new lows are made you're getting a cluster of selling i'm highlighting it there you see that i'm talking over it probably on the live stream explaining that on the other end of that, now you're getting market buy orders, right? After we get over all that net selling that was within the 45 and 30s or high 30, 39, right after you get a bunch of blue, blue meaning more market bids and then market sells, hinting that the buyers are trying to step in and squeeze out all those sellers. I took profit on one contract there on that squeeze. So it all happens really quickly. This is why you have to have the, the criteria there. Right? It happens really fast, as you saw it happen within maybe 15 seconds. Um, but I'm always explaining this in real time. So I'm just trying to recap this so that way you can 
repeat the process or learn to identify these situations so that way you as well can profit for something like this or maybe just see it in real time and practice visualizing it so that when it does happen you can capitalize on moves like this because this move ended up squeezing really really hard i'm gonna let the roll through a little bit um just so you can see the potential reversals just look at how amazing the fill is here the low of day is 39 i'm long six points off the low on the nasdaq that moves 10 points in a matter of minute a minute Okay, you, you get great fills, you get great risk reward trades in almost instantly if you're right, if you're wrong, you're instantly stopped out. There's a very low latency between the invalidation of your trade idea and the profit potential that you can you can take from the market if you spot these things quickly. So that was an example of one trade. We're gonna go ahead and talk into another one here. So stay tuned. Okay, here we are on another example, and I have the notepad up again. Okay, just to recap once more, highlighted numbers, trading session of what we traded. So highlighter, you can see that we're trading the low at the moment is the 57, 957, same DOM, same area we're referencing for the NASDAQ. We haven't traded any lower than that. We're trading exactly at the low of this current session that ends at number one for the reversal, the first criteria. Um, the second thing, as you can see right off the bat, as we covered in the previous example, that's selling. Right, I said 100. Anything over 100 was noteworthy. You have about cumulative here from three to 400 if you add it up, round up, whatever. That's a lot of um, that's a lot of market selling, right? Right at the low of day, you got two points off the low with tons of net selling there. Now, really quick, um, market selling is a very aggressive form of transacting uh, because there's four ways you can transact. You can, uh, well, sorry, two ways you can transact, and they translate into four different ways. But to keep things simple is you can hit the market buy button, you can hit the market sell button, and that is what Delta is being based off of, the market orders. A market order is you're trying to get in right now. Like you're not, you don't even care what the price is. You're not putting a limit order where you're waiting for price to come into you and then fill you in. You're hitting the market at whatever fucking price is trading. You wanna get in, you don't give a shit. That's what that's telling you. So that is telling you intent, right? The delta is giving you the intent of the participation at the low, and that tells you a lot about what happens or can happen if these people that are hitting the market sell order are not rewarded. Okay, so that's just another giving you more context again off the further of the previous example. So let's roll this through and see what happens here. Um, and again, this is the second example. We'll be on the live stream um, from the pulling it. Uh, you can see here I'm live. So here beneath my camera, that's me with the bird live streaming. Um, the previous low was 57. We've made one point lower so far. You're going to be, this is a very interesting long because we're making one point low. You see that little burst of buying, right? Let them see what happens. How much reward are these market sell orders that were there at the 60, 61? How much reward are they going to get is the question, right? And as you can see, they've been rewarded so far with six points of upside. I get long for that same reason. You got a market sell order right at the 55. 117 more sell market sell orders and there was just 300 collectively found at the 60 and 61 once they got above them they start to flip it to some market buying there is some more uh selling taking place right there at the 57 they're adding more to the book there so their sellers are really trying to press here as we're trading at the low so if no new low is made and these market aggressive sell orders are not rewarded the recipe for this is now a reversal right and you can see that my risk is very tight compared to the reward i'm looking for here on the reversal to the 80s it's a 20 point reversal compared to a about 10 point drawdown right two to one immediately now i don't take the two to one i scale out so i take more than that this ends up being a 100 point trade so I scale one out at 80, I scale another one at the 20K, and then I scale the last one out at 100 points higher um, all during the live stream. I believe the 100 point scale ends up being after the live stream, since I set a limit order and walked away for the day. But same, same issue here. The thing is that the way it resolves itself does take some time, but you have clarity in terms of no new lows being made, sellers hitting the tape at the low market buy orders coming in you're seeing me here change the the limit orders instead of putting three cells there i'm putting one and scaling another one at the zero 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 which essentially is 20k on the nasdaq and i'm pulling all my oco orders um trying to 
prepare for the reversal that is to come. And so as you're seeing price trade at the low end here, no new sellers are being rewarded. How do sellers get rewarded if no new lows are made, right? So if that doesn't happen, the only other thing that's imminent is for sellers to be trapped and for a reversal to the upside to occur. Now, they don't, this in this situation, it happens a little more slowly, but nonetheless, and that is because of the time of day, it was a lower part of the trading session during lunch hour where volatility is a lot less. But nonetheless, you get a reversal there up to the upside. They tag me out for a partial profit. Uh, this trade does take a little longer to resolve itself, but per my trade management, um, I don't sell the, the position fully because it just comes back into my entry. I hold it until invalidated. So I'm going to let this profit target get hit here. And then we're going to go into the next example that's very similar to the first one. slowly inching lower and then they just tap me out right because these are back tested levels that I, you can see i have notes there i know the level wants to back test so i'm not going to move my order if i know the significance of this level and there it is and on to the next one all right just real quick here you can see that the same nasdaq trading same principles are going to be here the difference is that i already had a position pre-market um you can see that i'm net long the 907 a level that has not traded during the current session open, right? If you remember earlier, open, and then this is the current traded price. Anything that's highlighted has been traded. I took this trade pre-market per a pre-market plan that I shared on the Discord. Um, if you're interested in that description below, um, I had taken it based on reclaim pre-market plan idea. Um, reclaims are something that is a different, is a form of reversal trade, but it entails different criteria. I'll cover it on another video, but for this one, it's simply on the same principles. So recapping, we're trading at the low of the session here, right? You're seeing market selling. You got some of it right here at the 31. You're going to see that there's more. Um, in this trade, I already have a PNL open. So you can see that I, I already am in profit from my current long. I've already locked in some profit um, past uh, pre-market, but I'm adding to the position. So I'm adding to a winner based on the same principles of the previous two examples on the reversal on the dump, right? The same criteria that we discussed, low of day, net selling, reversal, impulse to the upside on the market buying. So let's dissect that. We're gonna see here that we start to trade um, lower, right? You see there's a seller right there at 31, right? But at the open, I clear the dump as soon as I see that so I can get a cleaner picture of what's happening at the lows. You're getting some strong pace to the downside. We we're making a low, barely made a low by two points. I immediately see that and then I start to get interested see if there's any more net selling. I put a limit offer to buy me in, but I'm waiting to see if there's more selling that takes place. I see the reaction that pops off there for 10 points. I put a limit order to see if they can revisit it and tap me in for an ad. They add to the position there. So then I just sit on it, add the stop to the low end, and then wait for the level to work itself through. The market selling is not all at one level in this one. It's spread out between a few different points. But as soon as they hold the 25 where that previous seller was, they immediately bounce it higher, right? You saw that reaction and move off the high. You want to see that happening because what that's telling you is that buyers are willing to squeeze price higher. They're willing to aggressively hit the market buy right where all that selling is taking place, meaning they have the intent, not the ability yet, but the intent to squeeze price. Because if you were to take into stock the rotation factor, meaning every single time price moves aggressively on the center column here, you're going to annotate, you can make a mental note that the aggressive moves on this center DOM are to the upside, right? You can always, you're always, calc I'm always calculating this. You can, you should too, if you're looking for this, calculating where is the rotation factor of the movements on the DOM, right? Price shifting up and down. Where is the rotation factor on average at this current time, all right? In place in price. As we're hitting the lows, is price aggressively sweeping up? Or is, it, or is it barely trading up? It's barely sideways. It's not really getting a push up to the upside at all. And if you were to review this video and my live stream, if you want to see the full thing, you would take into stock that you can see that as soon as we hit the 20s, the low of the day, price immediately sweeps, sweeps, and sweeps. But it never sells aggressively lower and lower and lower, right? The rotation factor is to the upside. And that gives me conviction to hold the trade 
regardless of the price that it's trading at because I understand who the aggressive participant is in this transaction or during this period in time, right? So um, at this, as this happens, price ends up tapping me out. I think I end up selling at the 64s. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna fast forward it. I'm gonna click the uh, fast forward section because there's in something interesting that you get to see as we hit the 64s that you normally won't see on a chart. And you're gonna see that there is a huge seller there. Now he doesn't get rewarded, but there's a huge seller there. And I'm gonna kind of cover it as a bonus for fun because I love this Dom stuff. So let the thing roll through just so you can see that the trade does go in profit. Um, it does take some time. Unfortunately, not all trades work out right away, but I have the patience, the confirmations, the validations, and I have a reason to hold the trade regardless of what price is going or not rewarding me, right? So I'm gonna let it work through, and once we get to that zone of interest, which I think is a 964, you're gonna see, and I'm gonna re I'm gonna make sure it plays really slowly, so you can kind of see what a seller, an aggressive seller at one price level looks like, because those are things that you have to keep train your eye to spot when you're looking at all these fluctuations on the DOM. Um, not all of this information on the DOM is of use. You gotta learn to discern what is important from this DOM and what is not, what is noise and what isn't. Most times, the very blanket thing is if we're trading at balance, the purple area, and then point of control, it's probably just noise, okay? Nonetheless, anything that's within the lower high of day on a DOM, you're going to find a lot of value to attribute a trade idea um, for a potential reversal, which is why the DOM is one of my favorite tools to use when I'm trading um, because I get a lot of data from it that supports a reversal trade confirmation. As we inch into it, I'm going to slow down the DOM or the video so we can slow down the DOM. And you're going to see something really fun there. Okay, we're getting closer. I'm going to slow down a half percentage here. And you're going to see right here, and I pointed out on the live stream, right at the 64, you're going to see something you don't see often. Right here. You're going to see a seller reload, and you're going to see a lot of amount of net buying right there take place. And I thought that was fun. You know, I took my profit there because I was like, no, no, I'm buying, buying that guy. So we're hitting here to 64. We're 10 points away from my first take profit. And uh, here we are. Let it squeeze out. You're going to see 60 contracts exchange right here. Slowly pushing it up. And right there, 20, 30. Slow, price literally stalled. And you see that 70, 70. And I'm like, okay, wow, there's a big seller right there. 150, all at one value, all at once, at one go. It's telling you there's someone there transacting, trying to hold price down. So I immediately drag my price, take profit right there. And now I'm like, okay, I am not getting in the way of that. So that ends up um, reversing us about four points, maybe lo lower, not much. But then we end up squeezing past that guy and just going past him. But those are things that I look out for when I'm either taking profit, entering a position that help me give me conviction in trades when you see those little nuances like that so if you saw that of value hit the damn like button rewind it watch it and then see it in real time